Oh my goodness, y'all caught me in a yawn. Hey, it's Tammy with Real Southern Woman. And tonight we are going to talk about Esau and Jacob getting back together in Genesis. I hope y'all have had a wonderful few days. Um, Last week was crazy because after I had that tooth pulled, I wasn't worth a flip. And the medication that I was on made me crazy anyway. So it was probably better I didn't do a Bible study. Who knows what I would have said. <laughs> no, I wouldn't. Well, yeah, it did make me kind of crazy. They gave me Tylenol number three with ibuprofen. And y'all, it made me loopy. But, and I didn't have to take it the first couple of days. I was actually doing pretty good. And then it, my mouth started hurting so bad, I couldn't hardly stand it Saturday. I mean, my mouth was, my face was swollen. And that video on Friday, I made that video on Friday, but posted it on Saturday. And you can see my face, how fat it looked in that video. But anyway, um, I feel much better today. I um, think it's because I use Listerine. They tell you not to use Listerine, that it's too hard on you and too strong. And let me just say this, there was something in my mouth aggravating me that I think was bacterial because it was swelling and the pain was really bad. And it wasn't, I don't think it was dry socket because it wasn't like it was in the jaw bone or nothing. It was like mostly up in my cheek area. Anyway, I think the Listerine helped a lot. And I also switched with some salt water. So if there was something um, trying to grow in there, I got rid of it. And so a much better day. And I still had to take my medicine, but I'm much better. So, um... Enough about me, right? <laughs> um, I hope that y'all have had a good couple of weeks. I know I've been about one week we were in St. Mary's. Another week I went Martha Flip because I was not feeling well. And that's kind of how my Bible study works. And I know some people get frustrated and they don't watch. But um, it's just the way I am, you know. If God allows me to be here and... I'm feeling good that I'm here, and if I'm not, I'm not. Um, and I try not to stress over it, because if I stressed over it, then it wouldn't be a blessing to me, and I want it to be a blessing to me. Um, I just love, love the story that we're talking about tonight. It is so good to me. And I remember the first time I ever read it, and I cried when Jacob and Esau reunited and um it was just so sweet and special to me more special to me than even uh when Isaac met Rebecca because they didn't really know each other but <laughs> it was a sweet it was a sweet picture and a sweet you know it was sweet but when uh Esau and Jacob meet again, you know, as brothers, even if they didn't get along, they loved each other. And it made me think about how much I love my siblings. Um, even if you grow, you know, away from them, even if you don't live next to them, just because you grew up with them, you have a special bond. So it was just a really sweet um, homecoming for me. So, we'll talk a little bit about that, because there's quite a few things that goes on. Um, and we are in Genesis, and I believe it's chapter 30. Now, we will do 34, uh, 5, and 6 tomorrow. A Lord willing, I'll say Lord willing. I remember Green used to always say, whenever we'd leave or talk to her, she'd say, um, I'll be here tomorrow, Lord willing. Or, um, it was always Lord willing. You know, and so I'll always be here, Lord willing. Now, sometimes I'm sure the Lord would will me to be here when my flesh gets in the way and I'm not always here because of that. But for the most part, um, I do the best I can. How's that? <laughs> um, let's see. So the first chapter, um, Jacob gets all snuffy and puffy. And decides that he's going to leave and take his women and kids with him. And so he does. Little does he know that the woman that he absolutely adores and totally is so in love with, Rachel, is a little thief. 
and she decides that she deserves what her father has and goes in there and gets, of all things, his idols of his gods. And I'm sure they were probably made out of gold or something that was worth some money. Uh, so she stuffs them under the camel's furniture, which is underneath her bottom while she's uh, riding on this camel, and hides them there. And so uh, her daddy finds out that they've left three days after they've left, and he gets all upset, and he goes after Jacob, Rachel, Leah, and the midwives and all of their children. And he decides that he's going to catch up with them and get them. But God comes to him in a dream. There's so many times in this, just this one little area where God comes to people in dreams. Lots of times in this Old Testament, we've already seen many times that God comes to people in a dream. Um, he came to the kings that, um, remember that Abraham told them that Sarah was her, his sister. And then Isaac turned around and told them that Rebecca was his sister. And God came to these men in a dream and let them know that they were not to touch the women. Now he's coming to, uh, and I say the name wrong. I know I said it wrong a million times the other night when I was in there with Chris. Laban, I think is the, how you say it. Um, he comes to Laban in a dream and he lets him know, hey, you might go after Jacob, but you better not put your hands on him and you better not hurt him. And so um, he listens, and he gets to Jacob, and he tells Jacob that he even had the dream. But he says, why'd you take my daughters, and why'd you take my sons, and why'd you take my cattle? And if you'll notice when you read that, it's my, 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 my. It was obvious that Laban had a problem and didn't want to let anything go. And it was obvious that God was blessing Jacob, and Jacob endured a lot from uh, Laban, and he had his wages changed, he was tricked, and given uh, Leah instead of Rachel, he was given Rachel, then he was tricked about the cattle, I mean, or, or talked about the cattle, he worked for 20 years for the man, so I can see why, you know, he got ready to go, and God told him that he could go, so he left. And Rachel decides she's going to slip those pretty things underneath her and steal from her daddy. Little did Jacob know. I kind of, in a way, and I guess that's mean of me, but I was kind of in a way thinking, you know what? Since she's going to lie about it, and he's always favored her. When I first read the story, I thought she was going to get caught because he told her daddy that whoever stole that stuff, that he could kill him. And I thought, oh my gosh, her daddy's going to find that stuff and kill her the first time I ever read it. But she told him that it was her time of the month and that if it would please him, she didn't want to race up. And so he didn't even look underneath her. So she was pretty smart. But anyway, um, she got by with it. But the worst thing was that they were the the idols. You know, these girls, um, you know, well, I'm confused a little bit. I'll have to go back and look because, you know, he was sent there by his mother so that he wouldn't marry outside the family and marry somebody that um, would worship other idols and things. And I, let me just look real quick. Maybe they were, maybe they were, okay, y'all just give me a minute. Some of y'all probably know the answer.
It says in Laban, uh, Laban went into Jacob's tent, into Leah's tent, and into the two maids' tents, but he did not find them. Then he went out of Leah's tent and it entered Rachel's tent. And Rachel had taken the household idols, but put them in the camel's saddle and sat on them. And Laban searched, Laban searched all about the tent and did not find them. And she said to her father, let it not displease my Lord that I cannot rise before you. But it says, um, household idols. It says, Laban was an idolater and not a worshiper of Yahweh. The idols are literally teraphim, small household figurines, possibly used for, um, See. It says divination, the newsy tablets which record contemporary law for the Mesopotamian Hurrians connect ownership of the household idols with the inheritance rights. Rachel's motives may have been financial rather than religious. Okay, so it does say that she stole them because they were worth money more then because of what they were so um just goes to show you know nobody's perfect and even if he was sent over there to to marry his own kindred they still had his his father-in-law had some um idols small household figurines But anyway, we could we could study that more, but I don't think that much matters except the fact that she, she thieved them. She stole them, and she got by with it. Well, the next thing you know, he knows he's going to meet his brother, and he's scared. And by right, Esau, he ought to be scared. Esau was a good hunter. Esau was strong and hairy and mean and all that stuff. And he had tricked him. And now he's ready to come home. And he's scared to death. And if you notice, he puts the things that he loves at the at the back of the line. So he tells the people that <coughs> work with him, you know, that they're going to give him gifts as he approaches. Okay? So he puts his maidservants and their children first, Leah and her children next. And he and Rachel and their children last. So it goes to show if he was going to lose something, he did have favorites, that's for sure. And it's just, you know, weird in this Old Testament um, that there's favorites everywhere. And that there's uh, there's parents with favorites and there's God has, you know, he does. He favors. God favors people in the Old Testament. And in the New Testament, in the Age of Grace, there is no favoritism, okay? So it does change things a bit. Um, you know, I guess some people would be like, God never changes. He doesn't as far as his, his, um, he's, he's righteous, okay? Uh, but he does change the way he communicates. And he did change things when he provided us with a way to him through Jesus Christ. That's definitely a change, okay, in our favor, because he was favoring the Jews before that. Um, but anyway, so the wonderful thing happens, oh, well, first, the night before he leaves to go meet Esau, about forgot about it, he encounters an angel. So an angel actually um, wrestles with him. Now, this angel, some people say it's an angel. Some people say it's God. Um, but nevertheless, while he's wrestling, it's pretty evident that he's scared. He's anxious. He's got a huge day the next day. He's nervous. He knows that God has told him that he's going to prevail and that it's going to be okay for him to go ahead and go back. But he's still scared, just like we would be. Even if we say we have faith, and even if we say we believe what God says is true, we too doubt and worry and do exactly what Jacob was doing, okay? Because we are afraid, 
okay, that God is not going to take control and something terrible is going to happen. So this angel meets up with him and they wrestle. Now this angel touches his thigh. And what this means is it hurts him. And not only does it hurt him, but it hurts him just by touching. It dislocated his thigh by touching him. Now, nobody could do this unless they were a higher power. Unless they were an angel or unless they were God. And Jacob realizes this really quick. And when he does, after he's wrestled and wrestled and wrestled and he's not given up, and this thing touches him, then Jacob knows who he's dealing with. And Jacob says, I'm not going to let you. Then the, And then, then the angel say, asks him to let him go. Now, we know that if it were angel or God, they could do what they wanted to. They were powerful. But they actually asked Jacob to let him go. And the reason they do this is just to see his reaction, I think. And Jacob says, um, I'm not going to let you go unless you bless me. Because he knew he had encountered something very divine. Okay? And he knew what he was facing the next day. And he was still scared. So he says, please bless me, bless me, bless me. And he is, in fact, blessed. And the angel, or God, whichever one it was, tells him that his name is now going to be called Israel. And Israel, let's see, he wrestles with God. So he said to him, what is your name? And he said, Jacob. And he said, your name shall no longer be ja called Jacob, but Israel. For you have struggled with God and with men and have prevailed. Then Jacob asked, saying, tell me your name, I pray. And he says, why do you ask about my name? And, he, and so Jacob called the name of the place. Um, oh, he blessed him. Jacob calls the name of the place Peniel, for I've seen God face to face, and my life is preserved. So he, he, he said it was God, so I guess, in fact, it could have been God. Uh, and we know that angels um, can take a form of something else, or we don't really even know something, oh, this was like him dreaming, and then some say, no, it wasn't, it was real. Uh, but regardless, it was there. To show Jacob that God was with him. Okay? It was there to show Jacob and remind Jacob that God is powerful. God is real. And he's going to do what he says he's going to do. And so it gives him faith. Not only does it give him faith, but it also gives him a thorn in the flesh, just like with Paul, where he limps the rest of his life. Either it does this, just so that he's always reminded of that night that he was scared and was doubting God and God showed up and showed out. Or it was there to let him see that he could be taken down anytime so that he doesn't get too high and mighty and too uh, thinking too much of himself, which many, many people do. Um, so either way, it's a blessing, blessing, blessing. And Jacob was blessed. And now he is called Israel. And he meets Esau. They um, have a wonderful reunion. Um, Esau tells him that he don't need all of his flock and all that, that he's blessed. And Jacob just would not have any other way. And so Esau finally says, okay, I'll take it. And Esau um, goes back home. And he sets up tent, and some more drama will start the next chapter. And we'll talk about that tomorrow. The next chapter is um, chapter 35, okay? <laughs> Wait a minute, let me make sure. Thirty-four.
we got to talk about Dinah first. So chapter 34, 35, and 36 will be for tomorrow. I hope y'all have enjoyed tonight's lesson. Um, to me, it's one of the, there's just so many good things in this Bible. I don't know why we don't read it more than we do. Um, and I'm just as guilty as everybody else. Um, but God is good, and he shows his people he's good so many times. And we need to have faith um, and and walk the walk, not just talk the talk, right? So um, I just hope y'all have um, a blessed night, and we will say our prayers and thanks for joining me on with um, on Real Southern Woman. <laughs> Uh, dear Heavenly Father, we just thank you tonight for your grace, for your mercy, for your Son, Jesus Christ, who died and hung on that cross and rose again so that we could be reunited with you again. Um, we thank you that we do live in the age of grace, and we thank you that we are Christ's chosen, the church, the bride. We are very blessed, and may we not be depressed and blue. May we find comfort in knowing who we are, children of a king, belong in a heavenly place, and not let this world bring us down. Um, be with each and every one of us um, here tonight. Bless us, keep us, and Bring us back here safe tomorrow. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. I hope y'all have a great night. Um, I hope that y'all enjoyed the study. If you didn't get a chance to read it, go back and read it. It's really, really good. Um, the wrestling part is a little bit, you know, sometimes you got to read it two or three times to really kind of understand it. And even then it's a little weird, but just remember, just reflect on kind of what I said it was there for, and then I think you'll get the picture a little easier when you read it, okay? Y'all have a wonderful night, and we will see you tomorrow on Real, Real Southern Women. Woman. <laughs> <laughs>